it's weird because even though the camera is attached to the boat, it looks like the boat's moving relative to the camera. And it should be just the background, the water that's moving. But anyway, it's, I guess it's a reminder that the boat's always moving. There's no such thing as balance on a boat. Um, it's more like always a matter of holding on for dear life. Um, kind of like climbing a mountain. I think the best idea is to like, um, you know, you have four limbs, have three always connected. So before you move this, before you move one arm, make sure you have two legs and an arm attached. Or before you move a leg, make sure you have two arms and a leg attached. So um, what I'd like to share with you on this video is that and more about um, how to stay on the boat um, using jack lines and a harness and tether. For me now, it's the irony of wallowing around in win basically windless conditions in what they call the Roaring Forties of the South Pacific. Um, we're midway between Dunedin, New Zealand and the Chatham Islands. Here we are bobbing around at 44 degrees, 10 minutes south and 177 degrees, 15 minutes east. It's like really temperamental winds around here because the other night we would went from 15 knots of wind from the northeast, clear skies, a lot of stars, and within 30 minutes it changed to 35 knots from the southwest with rain squalls. Um, and the seas, big, bigger seas soon followed. Unfortunately, there's a tropical cyclone brewing right now off New Caledonia, and the forecast is for it to get stronger and work its way south down to here. It seems like all the energy that's normally teeming down here with stronger winds and waves is now getting sucked into that weather system. Um, and we get to patiently wait here in anticipation for a uh, dealing with the worst of it. <laughs> so, um, what do you do in that situation? You know, we got time, well basically you got time to ponder what's the worst that can go wrong and how to deal with it. One of those things that are probably up there on the tops is falling off the boat. So, what I was thinking of doing in this video now was showing you how I've set up this boat with its jack lines and how I've set up harnesses and tethers to make sure basically it's impossible to fall off the boat. And I've made up my own system, not using store-bought um, canned materials, but I made up my own harnesses and jack lines from a mountaineering store. And I think it's stronger and less expensive than any stuff you'll find in a marine store. So. Um, First, I'll show you the jack lines, and then the harness, harness, and some tethers. The jack lines are made with hollow nylon webbing filled with Dyneema or Spectra. The Dyneema is very strong with very little stretch, but it's round, so it rolls under your feet. By snaking the Dyneema rope inside the webbing, it is protected from the sun. Leaving it lying across the boat deck is not a hazard because your feet won't roll on it. So together, these live tied to the, from the most forward cleat to the most aft cleat on the back of the boat. And it never gets in the way. String your jack line from the front to the back of the boat along the same course that you would use to walk it and then tighten it as much as you can. Of course you want two, one on the port and one on the starboard. So now let's look at a harness. We know that with store-bought harnesses, if you look into them at least, you'll find that the failures are mostly in the stitches. So what I've done is eliminated the stitches. We also know that knots compromise the line strength by about 50 percent. So why not use webbing that's twice as strong as we need with knots? 
and instead of using extra fittings to adjust it, we can always adjust the knots. This leaves us a harness like this with a lot fewer fittings, a lot fewer failure points, and knots that we can adjust it with, and extra strong webbing that's stronger than we need to. So what I did here was use two, two types of webbing. The red goes through the body and the green goes over the back. And we've knotted it together so we can um, adjust it. Depending on right now, it's a bigger size for extra clothing. And then the tropics, I can make this a bit smaller so when I'm wearing less clothing. So I'll step through the red And I'll put the greens around my back. So it looks like this. In here we have a bowlin. Basically it's a bowlin and then a bunch of half hitches. So we can make this smaller by just adjusting the half hitches. Okay, so now you need to tether your harness to the jack lines. So what I've got here is a tether where I've used the sa same kind of nylon webbing that I used for the jack lines, but on the inside I've put some elastic strap. These are old so they're not too stretchy anymore. Notice I also have stitching on them. So if I make it through this storm, not only will I be able to upload this video for you to see, but I'll rebuild these to have new elastic in there and knots instead of stitching. So a couple carabiners on each, one on each end from a mountaineering shop. And one of the goals, well basically you're gonna wanna always be connected, right? So you need two of these tethers. I've got another one here. Of two, I use two different lengths, but neither is so long because you don't want to trip on them. So I'll use them so they go down to my feet and one a little bit higher. These are a bit longer than you'd normally want because the elastic has stretched. So that's why I need to rebuild these tethers. So it's another case is do as I say, not as I do. Anyway, so you want two tethers so that you're always connected. Kind of like you always want three or four limbs holding onto the boat at the same time. You never want to unhook with one tether unless you're already hooked in with another. So let's say you want to get from, you know, what I have is the mizzen mast. I've tied a line around both the bases of the main mast and the mizzen mast. So let's say I'm on this before and I want to move over to um, this jack line on the starboard side of the boat. I'll hook into that first before unhooking that. It's also a good idea to, when you're working it, um, always use the shorter one because the shorter, the shortest one you have, if you do fall off, that means you have less distance to fall. So that's it. Keep having fun on your boat. Over and out.